Hi, my name is Bill Kinney. I'm a math professor at Bethel University in St. Paul, Minnesota. And this is the first of a series of videos that I'm making on calculations with normal curves. Maybe you're taking this or you're watching this as part of a, a stats course, maybe some other course. Here's the question we're going to look at. It's a long question, and I think since I try to keep these videos 10 minutes or so, I think we probably won't finish this in this video but we'll continue it in another video or two. So the question is, suppose the resting heart rates for all adult males is normally distributed. I haven't said what normally distributed means yet. That's what I'll talk about mostly in this video. With a mean of 68 beats per minute, BPM means beats per minute, and a standard deviation of 8 beats per minute. So I'm assuming you've learned a little bit about means and standard deviations for data. Uh, now we're going to think of it in the context of what are called normal curves. Two questions. What percentage of all men, all adult males, I'm not saying whether it's in the United States or in the entire world, have a resting heart rate between 60 and 84 beats per minute? That's the first question. Second question, what resting heart rate is at the 92nd, 92nd percentile for all men. Two pretty different sounding questions with related to this one situation. By the way, as far as these numbers go, I just made these up. 68 beats per minute sounded pretty accurate, perhaps, for the mean of resting heart rate of all adult males. 8 beats per minute, I just made that up. Sounded reasonable. All right. So... <clears throat> how do we think about this problem? That's, that's what we're going to focus on in this video, is how to think about it. What you need to do is you need to use your imagination. Now, there's <clears throat> probably billions of adult males in the entire world and millions in the United States. What you need to imagine is that somehow you've gotten a database with all of their resting heart rates in it somehow. So you've got, say, billions of numbers. Now, that would be a lot of numbers to have to deal with, but just pretend that you have those numbers and you decide you're going to make a graph, a histogram in particular, that shows the distribution of those numbers. So I'm assuming you've made a histogram before. If you haven't, you might want to spend a little time looking it up on the internet or something. What is a histogram? And uh, I'm not going to draw it in detail, but just give you the general idea of what it might look like. I've got these different numbers along an axis here, and these different numbers are representing different resting heart rates. And notice that I made them two apart. I'm thinking of each of these numbers as breaking up the number line into intervals of length two. Like this one would be from 66 to 68, and 68 to 70, then 70 to 72, etc. Now, in my imagination, I'm also imagining, you know, typically you would measure heart rate to the nearest whole number. Of beats per minute, but I'm imagining that it's hooked up to a machine. You're hooked up to a machine that's actually going to even measure it to the, say the nearest tenth of a beat per minute. So it might come out at at 72.3 beats per minute if if you actually go on the machine. And based on those numbers, you know some of your numbers are going to be in the 60s, some of your are going to be in the 70s, some perhaps in the 50s and 80s, maybe even a few in the 40s or 90s for resting heart rate. But the majority of them are going to be in the upper 60s to low 70s. And if you make the vertical axis be the relative frequency as a percentage, and I won't say exactly what these percentages are going to be, you're going to get a graph. If you think about it, it should make sense. You might get a graph that look, would look about like this. Your histogram is going to have a peak near 68 since that's the mean, and probably tail off as you get further and further away from the mean in this kind of manner. And there would continue to be bars further and further apart, but they would get lower and lower. That should make sense that these most of the numbers are going to be clustered in here, and so therefore the relative frequencies will be higher, making the bars of this histogram higher. What I want to focus on is sort of the shape of the data. 
if you draw a curve that follows the trend here, goes through, say, the, the middle of the tops of these bars or so, the curve might look about like this. And, well, I almost never draw things perfectly here, but that's the idea. Can you see that? Now look at that curve. Maybe, just maybe, it reminds you of a bell. And therefore, people often call it the bell-shaped curve. Actually, there, there are lots of curves uh, in math that have a bell shape kind of shape to the graph. Normal curves are bell-shaped curves, but they're particular kinds of bell-shaped curves based on a particular kind of equation, a particular kind of function whose graph looks like that. I don't want to get into that kind of detail here. Um, just suffice it to say that for most data, if you use the normal curves, the particular graphs that I'm talking about here, you'll, you'll get a pretty good match. Let me make another graph where I just draw the curve. Where is this curve going to be centered? Well, ideally, it's going to be centered on the mean of the distribution. The mean is going to be where the peak is. So it's the highest point, right about there. This is going to be at 68 beats per minute. There's different symbols that are used for the mean. Sometimes X bar is used for the mean, and sometimes the Greek letter mu, which looks like this, sort of a weird combination of a U and an M. But that's the Greek letter mu, M-U, is how you'd write it in English. That's going to represent the mean of a population. And since we're imagining that this distribution is modeling a population, it's, it is traditional to call it mu here as well. So another feature of this curve that I want to point out that's going to show us how to visualize the standard deviation. If you make a, ver a horizontal line from this vertical line at the mean to a point that's right about here, and another horizontal line from that vertical line at the mean to a point right about there, that distance there turns out to be the standard deviation of the distribution. Now what are these points? They have a special name and they are special points. You might want to see, maybe pause the video and see if you can figure out why those points are special. I'm calling them inflection points. Why are those points special? Are you back now? Why are they special? Well, look at this part of the curve where the peak is. It looks like an upside down bowl or maybe a, a frown. That's called concave down. The slope of the curve is decreasing as you move from left to right. Whereas if you're to the right of this inflection point or to the left of the other inflection point, the curve is different. Concave up looks like an upright bowl or part of a smile. So these two points that separate the frown from the smile are called inflection points. They're special points. And that, again, like I said, that horizontal distance there between this vertical line and either inflection point does turn out to equal the standard deviation of the distribution, 8, in our case here. A Greek letter is used for that as well. That's the small Greek letter, sigma that represents that distance. Um, so very quickly, where are we going to go from here in the next video? We're going to try to answer this question. And here's the key thing. To, to figure out the percentage of all men that have a resting heart rate between 60 and 80 beats, 84 beats per minute, what you need to do is you need to find 60 and 84 in this picture. And it'll turn out 60 will be right about here, and 84 will be over here somewhere maybe right about there. And it turns out that the area under the curve, the curve is constructed in such a way that the area under the curve gives the percentage of all men having this resting heart rate. The area under the curve between 60 and 84 
gives the percentage of all men that have that resting heart rate between 60 and 84 beats per minute. I won't go into why, but that is the key thing about this normal curve, and that's how we're going to use it.